in making the civilization in making the temples in making the structures and not only instrumental they are the efficient cause as well now in the research studies uh, i must inform that there are two kind of studies are nowadays going up because mostly my uh, this presentation will be uh, uh, academical you know it's uh, uh, it's more practical as well as academical but it is very interesting in, as well so there are two ways of uh, 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 researches are going on the one is descriptive research it's it is the more most of the researches in the architecture particularly in the traditional architecture this descriptive researches are going on i don't say that, uh, I, i want to say that we have to stop this descriptive research because there are number of researches have been taken place we have to go into that detective research if this detective research is taken place there are numerous informations we have all hidden we have to unwrap we have to unfold we have to reveal the ancient glories ancient truths so this i am uh, this my uh, uh, presentation mostly based on the academical we have found number of informations very soon we are i am going to release a book on the legacy of our tradition a legacy we will stop doing the peripheral research you know the peripheral that be the, the how the temple is it has some 28 feet uh, span and uh, 40 feet height having karnakutas on four corners at the middle salars and the what are all the uh, the components it has this we don't we have we have enough but what it speaks really that we need when the we are in the digital age that means we have more apparatus we have more mechanism so by using all the modern tools and machines we have to use our intelligence and prove how our ancient structures are having valuable tools that is the face of india the face of india is not only the structure alone it is called intangible heritage we know what is intangible heritage and tangible heritage tangible heritage is tangible it is visible that is that anybody can talk about the visible structures who is going to talk about the invisible the people who found god who invented god the invisible god the intangible god who found this is the question this is the topic this is the topic what i am going to talk about god defined in sculptural architecture so before that i need to take you to an inscription in uttarmoru temple belong to 8th century there is a beautiful inscription we will go to the, all together how many people watching i don't know i call everyone please come with me we will go learn a beautiful inscription available in the uttarmeru temple uttarmeru sundaravadaraja temple what it speaks just uh, open the ppt one please ppt one uttarmeru temple yes See what how beautiful it is. It has all the four sides are protruded. The four sanctums are protruded. There are three tiers. 
Every tire has got shrines. It, this temple has got nine shrines. This is one and only the temple in the history. The inscription calls this temple as Vastuno Bhaskaraka, sun among the temples during 8th century AD. How, how beautiful it is, see. Whether we are able to make such kind of beautiful temples nowadays? No. What science it has? See the plan, how it is. The plan also has given in the picture. Very difficult. Modern day engineers, modern day architects will find difficulties how these people are in the ancient times able to prepare such a wonderful structure. This is not only the showpiece. It is showcasing how we are very old and how we are very intelligent in those days. Ingenious people who formed this beautiful. The shloka says, very beautiful. This is the one and the only the shloka I like very much. In the inscription itself it speaks, Swastisri Asya Alankara Manamcha Yatha Lakshana Samyutam Yaha Kanchit Veti Sakalam Sabaihi Vastavidam Varaha. What it is? Asya Alankara Manamcha. See the beautiful calculation, calculate this, uh, the multiple dimensions it has. One who is able to understand the Alankara Manam. Alankara Manam is not the designs, details, and the, these kudus, kodi palais, and sculptures. Alankara means it is composition. Alankara Manam. Asya Alankara Manam Chayata Lakshmana How this is uh, beautifully created with uh, more, uh, uh, compo you know, very, uh, very intricate compositions. Yaha, Kanchit Veti, Sakalam Sabaihi, Vastavidam Varaha. One who is able to understand the configuration and the composition of the structure is only, it is, it is possible only those who are able to understand Silpa Shastras. Normal people cannot understand. One who is well versed in Master Sastras are only able to understand and identify how composition is. What else we need to prove our glory? So, this is the, uh, uh, this is not only this a magic or making a well ornamentally uh, created structure. It has science inside. What it speaks? All the people must go there and see the Uttaramaru temple is, uh, it is uh, very intricately called, uh, composed temple. Okay. It is my topic is God defined in sculptural architecture is what it is, what it is. It is not by mythology. I'm not going to talk about mythology. We are standing away from mythology. Then what else? It is a built, it is a scientific geometry. It is aesthetics. We are defining God by scientific geometry and aesthetics, not mythology. This has to be called a seventh sense. What our uh, Shilpa Shastra uh, speaks, Paramanut Idir Proptam Yoginam Drishti Kocharam. What it is? Yoginam Drishti Kocharam. We don't want to meditate. We don't want to go to the forest. Who are the yogis? You know what is the meaning of yoga? Yoga is nothing but. One who is able to visualize inside, one who is able to see the picture inside before its manifestation, before revealing the thought what he has inside, who are yogis. So these tapatis are 
not the human being, please note it down. They came from the heaven. That means they are having seven sets. They are the yogis. Paramanat idit proktam yogi nam drishti kochara means this Paramana is visible to the people who are able to configure these kind of structures. Okay. That is why we are going to prove it scientifically, geometrically, aesthetically, not mythologically. So, now we will come to the heading. Shilpa Vastu. Shilpa Shastra Vastu Shastra. There is no difference. They are not two different identities. Shilpa is Vastu, Vastu is Shilpa. In Marisi Samhita, it speaks whatever the information untold, Shilpa Shastras can be verified for further information. Means what it is that Shilpa is Vastu Shastra, Vastu Shastra is Shilpa Shastra. And I request Stapatis who are viewing this one because I have given the topic what is cultural architecture I want to define it what is cultural architecture we hear about sculpture we hear about architecture what it is cultural architecture means an architect must be well versed in sculpture also unless he is he is uh, thorough in sculpture, he cannot produce valuable architecture. It is inseparable. Sculpture and architecture are inseparable. That is why we can call this one as sculptural architecture. The structure itself is sculpture. We have a number of quotations in the Shilpa Shastras, how we can call this as architecture is a sculpture that I will talk to you later about what it says our Shilpa Shastras. What is Shilpa? What is Shilpa? Is making sculpture? Okay. Making a temple also. So one who does the work by experiencing that is envisioning it is a beautiful English word. It is a envision, envision, envision. So, envisioning and experiencing and revealing it. What we experience inside is manifested outside. When you, when we people are wanted to make a Buddha image, unless we become Buddha, unless we experience Buddha, unless we Live like Buddha because the Buddha will not come. If you want to make a Vishnu image, Vishnu will not come out unless you behave like Vishnu, unless you feel like Vishnu, Vishnu yourself. That means you experience yourself as Vishnu when you are changing Vishnu. So you are changing as Vishnu to produce, to make a Vishnu statue. The same way. The same way, an architect also must experience the forms, the measurements, the scale. It is, a, you know, our, uh, I'm the uh, 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 pet disciple of Dr. Ganapati Stapadi and he is also, he was my guru indeed that uh, uh, he used to say a number of times about this matter, you know, uh, he used to say, gold changes into gold ornaments, what it is. A sculptor become sculpture. Sculptor himself becoming a sculpture. A sculpture is only a poetry, a poetry is written by a poet. Unless he changes himself as poetry, he cannot produce a successful poetry. poetry. The same thing. That is why this Saitriya Upanishad says, 
Raso Vai Saha. The God is the taste itself. If you are eating, if you are taking a, a something tasty food, if you are taking or if you are worshipping, if you are seeing a sculpture and uh, uh, where the rasam is, what is the rasa? The rasa is the creator itself. So if you want to see a temple, where many, many temples, if you find there are no inscriptions at all, I say no inscription is needed at all. Maybe because the structure itself himself, why should we write under, under we have to underline on the bottom. He is uh, 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 Parameshwaran or he is uh, Subramaniam. We don't want to write. Maybe because it speaks the character of the sculptor who does the temple. It speaks the character of the Shilpi who does the sculpture. It speaks the character of the poet making the poetry. So, uh, this is a very interesting thing. Raso Vaisaka, the Taitri Upanishad says, the sculptor who does the sculpture itself, a yeah, form, itself the sculpture. This is Shilpa. If you want to see the Shilpa, the Shilpi in the sculpture, I got a beautiful sculpture I want to show you. The Simha Karna Mudra, you know, the Simha Karna Mudra, the sculpture has in the, like this, if you see a Vishnu deity or Shiva, most of the temples in the Pallava times and the early times, you can see the Mudra will be like this. What it is? This is called Simha Karna Mudra. Simha Karna Mudra means it calls the devotee to the God. Can you see, can you show the picture too? Yes. This is the Simha Karna Mudra. The, the, the divinity, the God calls the devotees. This is the posture of the Mudra. It looks like this. See how these people, these sculptors are created, their sculpture. So if you want to make this Shiva deity, unless he feels and he enjoys, he experiences the character of the Shiva, he cannot produce the Shiva deity. Then only that is why, you see, who is sitting inside of the hand that I want to exaggerate here. The Shilpi is sitting inside the Simha Karna Mudra. In such a way, he created the sculpture. So, the Stapatis, the sculptors, the Shilpis are making the God sculptures. When we are worshipping God, it is nothing but we are worshipping the creator also, one who does the sculpture, that we have to note it down. It is very important. People must aware about it. If you ask me, I can give you a number of uh, 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 sources for this. What else we need? Raso Vaisaka. And one more thing about architecture will come. Architecture is not a monument. We should not call it as monument. We should not call the structure as monument. Right? Because it is not a structure. You know what is the meaning? I don't want to exaggerate. I want to explain the meaning of monument. It is built with soul. If your building, if your structure is built with soul, how it could be a monument? It is a living organism. It is a living organism. 